Welcome, boys and girls, to our PSG Jam session today. I'm afraid Colin's not able to join with us this morning, but I've got a little story to share with you all about Maximus Mouse this morning. So maybe you'll put up with me being back with you this morning. I was sitting in the vestry, just flew by, when I heard the little voice of Maximus going, Psst, Minister! Psst, Minister! I looked to see where Maximus was and I said, How are you today, Maximus? Exhausted, Mr. Mernon, he said. Why are you exhausted, Maximus? I asked him. Not eating too many hamburgers again, have you? Or have you been cleaning up after the children's summer service? No, Mr. Mernon. I, I was at my great uncle Herbert's funeral, said Maximus. It took us days to get there and days to get back. And while I was there, the most amazing thing happened. I couldn't resist asking him, I said. An amazing thing happened at a funeral, Maximus. Tell me more. So Maximus began to explain. I will not at the funeral exactly. That, that was very dignified for such an important mouse as my Uncle Herbert. It was afterwards that it happened, he said. What do you mean afterwards? I asked him. Well, you can imagine that lots of mice had travelled to pay their respects to Uncle Herbert, for he was our chief mouseketeer, and everyone loved him and respected him. Eh, uh, wait a minute, Maximus, what, what is a mouseketeer? Well, he's like your major general in the army, Maximus answered. Okay then, so tell me, Maximus, what, what happened? after the service. Well, we were sitting talking, as you do, telling our favourite stories about Uncle Herbert. Like the time he had chased a whole group of cats out of the barnyard. Or the time he single-handedly took on a wild ginger tomcat and outwitted and outran him and got the fat tomcat stuck in between two fence posts. It was hilarious. Oh, how we laughed and cried at the stories of his bravery and honour. So, what was this thing that happened, Maximus? I pursued. You keep avoiding me telling me what it was. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, my, Mr. Mernon, said Maximus. Well, you, you see, everyone was starting to get a bit hungry. And we would not planned to be there that long. And that there was no food to eat, or at least not enough for everyone. So I had a little bit of cheese in my bag, and, and I shared it, and someone else had some sweets, and, and another a broken biscuit, and so on, until everyone, everyone got something, and no one went home hungry. <laughs> funny, funny you should say that, Maximus. There's a Bible story just like yours that's recorded in all the Gospels. In one version of the story, a wee boy shared his loaves and two fish and more than 5,000 people got fed after Jesus had blessed the food and shared it with everyone. Did you say 5,000 people get fed, Mr. Mun? Oh, I did, Maximus. Yes, I did. More than that, in fact, when you count that there were men and women and children, because it says in the Bible that only the men were counted. Well, praise God for that, minister. Did they count all the mice too? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know about that, Maximus. But I'm sure the field mice had quite a feast of their own after everyone had left. And well done you for sharing what you had as well. Thanks, minister. It felt so good to share. I nodded quietly and turned to Maximus. You want a bit of my sandwich? Maximus twitched his nose and said, I thought you'd never ask. 
I hope you enjoyed that wee Maximus story today about his visit to his uncle's funeral. Was it amazing that Maximus shared something and everybody else shared what they had too? And so everybody got fed and nobody went home hungry, just like what Jesus did when he fed the 5,000 people in that big crowd. Let's just have a moment of quietness as we close our eyes and bow our heads together and pray. Lord God, wherever you went, the crowds followed because they knew that you would feed them in body, mind and spirit. May we gather friends too because we are known to be kind and generous. You find it difficult to have a time on your own May we always have peace to recharge when we are tired. Help us, Lord Jesus, just like you did, to always see possibility and potential, to enhance the gifts of others, sharing what we have, and being glad of all that others bring. So may we love and serve you in all things. Amen. One of my favourite hymns is Welcome Everybody. It's good to see you here. And we hope that soon, at the beginning of September, we'll be able to welcome, well, unfortunately not everybody, but some people back to church. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So I thought we'd finish by singing Welcome Everybody. So I'm going to get Fishy Music to play it because they can sing and play the music much better than I can. Bye. You'll see a little Where's Maximus after the song has finished. And you can try and see if you can spot him where he's hiding in the church today. <laughs> Here we are together, now we can begin. The youngest and the oldest, the only child the twin. Some who're feeling left out, and some who're feeling in Gathering in this place Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here Joining in this song Even those who feel that Their singing's not that strong And as we sing May every person know that they belong Gathering in this place Welcome everybody It's good to see you here Welcome everybody It's good to see you here It's good to see you here, gathering in this place. Here we are together, with our hopes and fears, bringing many feelings, our laughter and our tears. And now it's time for everyone to tell the world we're here, gathering in this place. It's good to see you here. Welcome everybody. It's good to see you here. Welcome everybody. It's good to see you here. Gathering in this place. Welcome everybody. It's good to see you here. Welcome everybody. It's good to see you here. It's good to see you
Today, we're in the vestibule right at the very front of the church. And this is the stairs going up. We're looking to see if Maximus um, has been creeping about up the stairs. Uh, we had a good look and it appears he's not up there. So I'm just checking to see if we can find him round about here. Oh, oh I wonder what this thing's up here. Oh, this is in the remember of somebody who was killed in the war on the 6th of May 1941 at William Gibson. I wonder. No, Maximus is certainly not there. Oh dear, here's the old cloak hangers. And in here, look at that for the old electrical switches, eh? Wow. And here we come along here. Another one of our little stained glass windows. All our books have been cleared away from the front door. Oh, this is an old picture of Sherwood Greenlaw when we had the tower. Oh, wow. Look at the size of that tower. It was massive. Even had a clock on it. Wow, isn't that amazing? Yeah, here's a front door, which is obviously locked just now. I wonder if, oh, look, there's big spaces down the bottom. I wonder if Maximus maybe creeps outside. Sometimes you see that down at the bottom. Wow. I don't know where this Maximus could be. He could be anywhere. Yeah. And that looks like a picture of the old Greenlaw Church round the corner. Yeah, which was a part uh, of our great heritage and tradition. Here's our other stained glass window. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, and another little war memorial and another little look up the other side of the stairs. Hmm, I wonder, did you spot Maximus there this morning? <laughs>